Okay, so today we are learning all about how to use commas with prepositional phrases. And with this one, there are really three separate rules. One, if a prepositional phrase of five or more words starts a sentence, follow it with a comma. Two, do not use a comma between separate phrases unless they are in a series. And three, Commas can come after shorter prepositional phrases at the beginning of sentences, but this is only stylistic. Let's take a closer look at these. Now, this one seems pretty straightforward. We just count how many words are in the prepositional phrase and then add or don't add a comma, but there are elements that can get kind of tricky. So let's look at some examples. So let's take a look at this one. Before school, we got breakfast. This has one two words in it, this prepositional phrase before school, so we do not need a comma there. But let's take a look at this sentence. Under the spreading chestnut tree, the library stands. So here we have our prepositional phrase, under the spreading chestnut tree. Again, under is the preposition. Tree is the object of that preposition. We have one, two, three, four, five words. That's five or more, which means we need a comma right here. So let's take a look at what we have here. We have the prepositional phrase under a pile and the prepositional phrase of clothes. However, these are not in what we call a series. All it means if something is in a series is can you put and between it? We would not say under a pile and of clothes, right? So for that reason, these are not in a series. They actually go together. Of clothes describes the pile. Because they go together, we treat them as one prepositional phrase. So we're actually going to put a comma at the end here. Let's look at another example of this type. So in the back of the cupboard, I stash my candy. Here we have the prepositional phrase in the back and also of the cupboard. Now we cannot put and between these, so it's not a series. They go together of the cupboard describes back, which means we need a comma after cupboard. All right, now our second rule. Do not use a comma between separate phrases unless they're in a series. Remember, to find out if something is in a series, we just put and between them. So we add and. So let's look at this one. Over hill, over dale, we journeyed. Now, could we say over hill and over dale? You know, we sure could. So that makes this is a series. So what we're going to do is over hill, comma, over dale, comma, we journeyed. Again, that's because these prepositional phrases are in a series. Now this one is really tricky. We have two prepositional phrases on the sand and then by the sea. Now what's tricky about this is it technically could be a series. You could say on the sand and by the sea she lay, but that means something kind of different, right? It, it's suggesting that the sand she's laying on is separate from her being by the sea. If we have this one describing sand, then the sand is by the sea, right? And she's on that sand. So more than likely, this sentence means to not be a series, but it could be. Um, I'm going to treat it as if it's not a series. And for that reason, I'm just going to put a comma here and nothing else. Let's look at this one. On the sand of the beach by the inlet she lay. On the sand and of the beach? Nope, we couldn't say that. So that means these are not in a series, which means we need a comma at the end of the prepositional phrase, not between them. All right, our third rule. Commas can come after shorter prepositional phrases at the beginning of sentences, but this is only stylistic. This is what is so pesky about commas, is sometimes you can just put them in because you feel like it. Now, there are some places where obviously we can't put them in, but after a prepositional phrase at the beginning of a sentence, often you can. In the morning, she began to search. Now, technically, you don't need a comma here, but you can put a comma here after in the morning if you want to. Again, that's purely stylistic. Here's what you want to avoid is what, what I would call comma glut meaning there are way too many commas in your sentences, right? And it makes reading them clunky or challenging. If you already have a lot of commas going on in a sentence, don't add that comma after the short prepositional phrase. If you don't have any, sure, why not? Knock yourself out. So to review, here are rules about commas and prepositional phrases. 
Hopefully this was helpful for you in learning, you know, when and when you don't use commas. Um, and I hope to see these rules being used correctly on all future writing assignments. Thanks.